everybody. At this time, I would like to ask you to please take your seats. Welcome, class of 2020. It is my pleasure to welcome you back to campus to recognize your degree as a member of the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. A couple of quick announcements. Photography will be taken to the right as you exit the stage. I would like to ask all guests to please remain seated during the ceremony. At this time, please join me in welcoming Father Tony Penna, Associate Vice President and Director of Campus Ministry for our invocation. First, I'm happy to be here. Uh, You've had a lot of blessings already today. Uh, I had that blessing prepared. I don't think I'll use it. I just want to um, start by saying St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuits, you had a favorite saying that the greatest sin in the whole world was the lack of gratitude. But that's not true today. We are a grateful university, primarily for what's happening today. Uh, we're grateful for the faculty of our university, people who are, who are, their prowess and skills and dedication to the art of teaching is the real pulse of our university. You know, I do wanna identify some blessings that we have going on today. The faculty of this university bless us every day. And that blessing touches not only the students in the classroom, all the colleagues like myself who work alongside them. So we are grateful for the blessings that come our way through our faculty and our administrators at the Lynch School of Education. And we're grateful for the blessing that we have in our parents here today. I mean, you have shared with us your best stuff. Look at them. You have entrusted them. Yeah. You've entrusted them to what we do here as a university. Your faith in us and your willing to trust us and willing to pay the tuition. <laughs> you have blessed us, so you are a blessing to us for which we are grateful. And I look at our students. I mean, we know since your arrival on Chestnut Hill, this university thinks the world of you, your talent, your goodness, your commitment to, to values like, you know, justice and community and love. You are a blessing to us. So everyone says to me once in a while, Father Tony, can you do a blessing? I live in a world of blessing. So I think the faculty here who bless us, the f parents here who have blessed us through in so many ways, and the students who bless us with your, your spirit and intelligence and skills and resilience and your willingness to make our world a better world. I live in a world of blessing, so I thank all of you for blessing me today, and if I can offer you any blessing, it is stay close to one another because we have a wonderful way of blessing each other, and thank God we do. Amen.
Thank you so much, Father Tony. I am now delighted and pleased to introduce Dr. Stanton Wortham, the inaugural Charles F. Donovan, SJ, Dean of the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. Thank you, Julia. <clears throat> Julia has done Yo Person's work in organizing this ceremony together with her staff, Jill and all the others in the undergraduate office, Maureen, so I'm grateful to them for pulling this all together. I've seen several of you and congratulated you. It feels a little bit unusual because normally one is congratulating graduates at the very end of their senior years, but you all are in this unique position and I'm grateful that you have come back. We're very pleased to see you all. It's an unusual thing, but you have shown character in being able to live through what was a very difficult time at the end of your senior years. Now you're all launched, you're 18 months into your lives post-graduation, and I admire you for the work that you're doing, and I appreciate the service that you're giving to others and to the larger community. I'm very pleased to be at the Lynch School. We have a simple mission here. Our mission is to enhance the human condition, expand the human imagination, and make the world more just. This is a mission statement that was written decades ago by the faculty, and it captures several crucial things that I wanted to underline for you today. So enhancing the human condition I take to mean trying to help people develop in a broad sense. And this is something that I would like to spend just a minute on. Here at Boston College, following the Jesuit tradition, we spend a lot of time encouraging young people to practice what the Jesuits call discernment. And the larger purpose of that is to try to figure out what is gonna sustain a fulfilling life for you over an entire lifetime. That there are many things in life that make us feel good, there are many things that seem like obligations, things that we ought to do. Many of those things are a little bit deceptive because as you move further on in life, you recognize that fulfillment is a difficult thing to accomplish. Happiness is different than fulfillment. Happiness is fine, I'm all pro-happiness, but happiness by itself cannot really sustain. If you've spent your life trying just to be happy, you reach an age like mine and you start to think, well, is that enough? There has to be something more. And I think the reason why this is is because there is something about us as humans that is connected to or called by some larger moral order beyond ourselves. We have somewhat differing visions of what that moral order is. For some of us, it's a divine order. For some people, it has to do with an ecological order, a sense of our place in the natural world. For some, it has to do with a vision of the social order, what a truly just social system would be. Whatever your vision of that larger moral order, you need to figure out what you're called to do to contribute to it. Because if you can figure out, if you can discern what your place is, what your role is in connecting to what's ultimately important as you see it, then you have a chance at fulfillment over time. Because if you've spent a significant amount of your time and energy in your life pursuing that larger good, pursuing what within you is called to participate in this larger purpose or larger project, that's what true fulfillment comes from. And so the most important thing I wanted to say to you this morning, or I guess it's this afternoon now, is please try to figure out for yourself what speaks to you. I can't do it for you. We here haven't the right and we haven't the capacity to tell you this is what you're called to do. You must do this. This is something you have to work through for yourself because it's something about you that is called. But we do have, I think, a right, and we have an obligation to try to force you to not settle for something that's too thin. Don't settle for a thin vision of what your life should be about. Don't settle for a thin vision of what it is that's gonna bring fulfillment, because true fulfillment is a relatively deep thing. It involves more than just happiness. Often it involves suffering and difficulty of various kinds. But once you've gotten a sense of what it is you're called to, what larger order you're connected to, it can give you a shot at moving forward and experiencing this deeper sense of fulfillment over time. So my wish for you all, as you continue your path that you've already begun out there in the world, is that you'll have the opportunity to do what I hope BC gave you occasionally, the opportunity to step back and reflect a bit on what you're doing with your larger life, what larger purpose you're trying to serve, 
and then I truly wish that you will have the chance later on in life to feel a deep sense of fulfillment that you have managed to contribute to something, to connect yourself to something that truly connects to this larger world, this ultimate sense of meaning and purpose, however it is that you feel connected or called to that. So congratulations, we're very pleased to have you. We're hopeful for your futures, we love you all, and thanks very much for being here. Thank you very much, Dean Wortham. I would now like to invite Dr. Jacqueline Lerner, Professor of Applied Developmental and Educational Psychology, to share some brief remarks with the class. Supposed to spray. Wow, okay, the class of 2020. I'm so pleased to be here with you. Of course, when Julia asked, I was, yes, tell me what time. So, class of 2020 will always be a part of your identity. This is going to have some adolescent psychology themes, perhaps, some young adult themes, if you know me. So I just want to say a few things today from that theme. First of all, you've been on the other side of college, I mean, for over a year. And at this time when we celebrate officially your in-person graduation, let's just reflect on the last 18 months. Um, again, as a developmental psychologist, I care deeply about the things that shape us and that impact us during our development. So here's what I have in bold. You experienced a global pandemic as you made the transition from college to the autonomy of young adulthood. As I say again, whoa. So as students of human development, you may know that what we call what we've experienced in 2020 was an historical normative, although negative, life event. That's the jargon. You can bring that around to your dinner conversations and say, I did, you know, non -norm normative, negative life event. And you say, well, what is normative about it? Well, we, it happened to everyone. So we were in it together despite our individual differences and experiences. And that's what I need you to reflect on. The fact that we agree it's a negative event, and even though I'm a positive youth development person, I'm not going to ask you that when life gives you lemons, you should make lemonade. Um, but I am going to tell you that when life gives you lemons, try to find some of the positive in it, and then you can make the lemonade. The global pandemic changed all of us, and of course, as we develop, we change constantly. But this world event forced us to look at ourselves and ask different questions. I know I did. I asked many different questions than the ones I usually do. So while we certainly had many challenges, I hope you'll reflect on yourself, think about what changed, what parts of you did you find you weren't aware of, what strengths did you, that in you came to light. How did you negotiate this transition to post-college life? Your relationships, your finances, maybe going back home, although we know that happens to over 55% of uh, young adults, even without a global pandemic, so you're not alone. Did it delay or speed up your autonomy development? Just reflect, reflect, reflect. That's how we grow, and that's how we understand ourselves and what gives us strength and resilience. So in closing, I want to say there's a high probability that you will live for another six to seven decades. And if my grandmother lived for 10 plus decades, maybe even more than that is in your future. Yes, and you will likely experience a myriad of life events, some negative, some positive, some normative, some non-normative. But with each one, I hope you'll remember what you learned about yourselves, build on the strengths, and what carried you into this stage of your young adulthood. So go forth with hope for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lerner. I would now like to invite Dr. Mariela Paez, Associate Professor of Teaching, Curriculum, and Society to share her own remarks and reflections. Thank you. 
welcome to our fabulous class of 2020 graduates and your honored guests, including family members. Today, we celebrate you, our class of 2020. We know that you didn't get to participate in a traditional commencement, but we thank you for the opportunity of being here today so that we can celebrate your achievements. In this day of celebration, we recognize that we are blessed and fortunate to be here. And we thank God and those who have made this journey possible. Sadly, we remember the family members, colleagues, and friends that we have lost in this terrible pandemic. Also, we reflect and never forget our call to social justice and equity, especially during these current times. I have, been giving, I have been given three minutes for this graduation message, so I want to share with you three insights that I have learned to keep close in my heart and in my mind. These are things that I have learned in my role as a daughter, a sister, a mother, a wife, a friend, and a Latina faculty member. Most importantly, these are lessons that I have learned and applied in my teaching, mentoring, and advising students, including many of you, graduates of 2020. First, life is about relationships. Since the first days when we were born into this world, we depend on our relationships to grow and thrive. Nurture those relationships, especially those connections and relationships that you have developed here at Boston College. Second, learning is a lifelong journey. Continue learning and remain open to new ideas and creative ways of seeing and being in the world. Third, always remember to follow your purpose. Dean Worthen just spoke about this just a few minutes ago. And I think in a world with many challenges, including health and stress, the challenge of finding balance between work and home the key is to remember your purpose. Your Boston College journey has helped you to reflect and define this purpose. At the Lynch School, you have engaged with the difficult questions. What are you good at? What brings you joy? What does the world need from you? Remember those teachings and continue with your path of finding meaning in your work, joy in your accomplishments, and making the world a better and more just place. Congratulations. Continue to go forth and set the world aflame. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Paez. I now will invite one of your classmates, Catherine Cram, Bachelor of Arts in Applied Psychology and Human Development, to share remarks and reflections about your class. Catherine. Thank you, Dean DeVoy, for the kind introduction, and good morning to my fellow graduates, families, friends, faculty, and staff. I am so honored to be here today with all of you to celebrate our graduation from Boston College. Before I continue, I would first like to recognize the tireless efforts of everyone who helped organize this special day. Today could not have been made possible without each and every one of you, so thank you. I have to admit, when Dean DeVoy first asked me to share a few words at this ceremony, I was a bit overwhelmed. How am I supposed to encapsulate our unique time here at Boston College in just a few, a few short minutes? As I reflected, I found myself being drawn to one day in particular. The day is Wednesday, March 11th. Although that date may not be significant to most, it is a day the Boston College class of 2020 will quite literally never forget. 
It was the day we found out that our time here on the Heights was being cut short. It was a day of heartbreak, uncertainty, and angst, but it was also a day filled with love, friendship, and community. Whether it was migrating to the mods, taking our final walks around the res, or gathering together one last time for the beloved senior sunrise, the Boston College class of 2020 was truly a community in those final 96 hours together. I think that's what makes this place so special. When I think of the word community, I think of Boston College. It is the people, the spirit, and the shared desire to strive for excellence at the highest level. To know Boston College is to know what it feels like to be part of a community. As BC graduates, we have now joined one of the strongest communities of them all, the loyal Boston College Alumni Network. While I stand here before my fellow graduates, I am in awe of the community we have built together within our own academic school. Although I may not know all of you, I know that we share something in common. We chose the Lynch School because of a shared commitment and passion for creating a better and more equitable world. The Lynch School has prepared each of us to be well-rounded individuals equipped with the skills and knowledge to go out and serve diverse communities in a variety of professional roles. As we embark on this new journey as Boston College graduates, we will continue to use our Lynch education as the foundation that guides us, not only as professionals, but as men and women for others. As I conclude my remarks, I want to say how proud I am of the class of 2020. We finished our last months of college locked inside, isolated from the very community we have spent the last four years building together. We were faced with unprecedented circumstances, but came out together stronger than ever. The Boston College class of 2020 will forever be bonded by this unique experience. As we prepare to close this particular chapter, we will continue on in our journey of discovery. We will use our knowledge acquired during our time as undergraduate students to continue to learn, search for the truth, and live in service to others in fulfillment of the Boston College mission. As always, congratulations to the class of 2020 and go Eagles. Thank you so much, Kate. At this point, I would like to also acknowledge, and I would like to ask her to please stand, our very own Sarah Stottlemyre. Sarah was the Boston College Class of 2020 Finnegan Award winner. This honor, which recognizes the graduating senior who best exemplifies the university's motto, ever to excel, is normally presented at the commencement exercises. And we just wanted to take a moment and, and acknowledge Sarah today for that special award. Thank you, Sarah. At this point, I will invite Dr. Paez and Dr. Lerner back to the podium as we recognize you individually for your degree. Dr. Paez will read the first half of the names um, as you are recognized, and then Dr. Lerner will come up and recognize you the second half of the alphabet. Um, and as your row is cued, please take the name card off the back of your chair, or the front of your chair, wherever it is, and present it to the faculty member, so Dr. Paez or Dr. Lerner, who is calling your name as you approach on the right. Please note that the event is live streamed, and you may want to pause for a second at center stage as you receive your gift. You'll be on camera in the center aisle there. Um, so that the folks at home will be able to see you as you receive your commemorative coin. The photographer will again take your picture as you are leaving the stage there. All right, and now we have the acknowledgement and reading of the names. Dr. Paez. Catherine Kern. Can you hear me? Is this on? Catherine. Okay. Abigail Adam Kasky. Amanda Amorosi. 
Lydia Bell Antrim. Hart Davlin A.U. Sophie Banchoff. Jacqueline Bosseli. Gabriela Burrito. Sarah Caroline Birchman. Julia Bobok. Megan Queen Boyer. Alexandra Nicole Brandes. Makena Lena Bright. Emily Buttinger. Kira Ann Cahill. Clara Joy Cahill Ferrella. Grace Cameron. Pablo Cardenal. Taylor Kodash. Caroline Choi. Colleen Conlon. Elizabeth Kosha. Elizabeth Kosha. <laughs> Michaela Marisa Cunningham. Amanda Jean D'Alessandro. Julia DiGiromano. Maura Donnelly. Ellen Fantasi. Sarah Elizabeth Fay. Annalisa Ulloa Fazio. Lucy Featherston. Catherine Generis. Walter Harris. Rory Thierry Arms. Diana del Carmen Hernandez. Francis John Hess. Lindsay Catherine Hyman. Lena Margaret Farah Hymel. Amika Jasti. Isabella Johnston. Ming Xuan Olive Ju. Laura Keck. Caroline Lillian Kyle. Alina Kim. Carissa Kim. Hannah Kim. Jasmine Soo-hyung Kim. Christine Kim. Katherine Klein. 
Caroline Kraus. Cameron Edward Kubera. Cassandra Marilyn Conkle. Sonia Quack. Catherine Carroll. <laughs> Duan Chen Leo. Kelly, Kelly Mahalik. <laughs> Virginia Lockwood Mahoney. <laughs> Catherine Lucille Manley. Frank Maroney. <laughs> Carmen Teresa Martin. Monica Rose Mescolo. Emily McConnell. Elizabeth Grace McCullough. Julia Marie McDonald. Madison Rose McNicholas. Julia McTeague. Sheridan Christina Miller. Nurun Nahar. Bridget Casey Naughton. Claire O'Connor. Grace O'Hara. Chelsea Jinhee Park. Alyssa Paul. Francesca Robin Pellegrini. Taryn Pang. Julia Picard. Daniela Pulat. Annie Quinn. Zoe Grace Nardon Rock. Maddie Reed. Emma Claire Reamer. Sheila Ritano. Nicole Rivera. Elizabeth Ream. Elise Rosenthal. Claire Shannon. Gabrielle Silberman. Eric Lawrence Simeone. Catherine Ray Sinclair. Courtney Smith. Sarah Smith. Lauren Kathleen Snyder. Madison Steinman. Jonah Stice. 
Sarah Stodelmeyer. <laughs> Jamie Sung. <laughs> Kathleen Taylor. <laughs> Wendy Allison Elk. <laughs> Taylor Rose Ulrich. Emily Ursini. <laughs> Olivia Vaughn. <laughs> Sheila Vazir. <laughs> Therese Vila. <laughs> Emma Catherine Walsh. Erin Walsh, Cassandra Grace Wesner, Claire Alice Wilson, Arissa Troy, Michelle Zhou, Yutang Zhang. Love you, Professor Lerner. <laughs> wow. Um, thank you. Thank you, Dean Wortham. Thank you, Dr. Paez, Dr. Lerner. Very special thanks to Maureen Raymond, Jill Pickner, the undergraduate office staff. This would not be the way it is today without them. Um, we have a couple of GAs that helped out, and I even managed to rope in some current students to help out for today. So thank you. Big, big thanks to all of them. And, I also want to acknowledge any of your classmates that were unable to attend today. Um, we do hope that we get to see them soon. We hope that they visit us. We miss them too, and we'd love to have them back. We have one final gift for you. Um, if you're interested, we have champagne glasses as another gift for you, for you to pick up outside of Campion 104. In closing, go forth, soar eagles. You've been soaring. You've already done it. You keep doing it. You didn't get to say goodbye to everybody the way you wanted to on March 11th, 2020. Some of your friends, some of the faculty that you cared about, some of the staff and administrators, you didn't get to, to do that the way that we had hoped for you and that you had wanted to and that you so deserved. And you didn't get to have a ceremony back then, and it might have been hard to wait, and you've been patient. But I think that makes today all that more meaningful. I think it makes it so meaningful. And I'm so glad that you're here. Do the next right thing. You know what that is in your heart. You already know what that is, and you know where that voice comes from. Congratulations to the Boston College Lynch School Class of 2020. You did it! <laughs>